Hi, and welcome to another session of The Mindful Eye. I'm Patty Schultz, and in this session I will take you through a nighttime photo shoot and share with you a stacking technique for photographing and processing star trails. This shot was taken at Mono Lake during the full moon, and a friend had, was with me and showed me this technique of taking multiple images of a scene, knowing that later you would stack the images together for the final image. The advantage to this method is that exposures are shorter, thus eliminating the need for using the noise reduction in your camera. This method is not new, and you'll find many resources on the web uh, with more detailed information on the subject. To take multiple exposures, of course you need a steady tripod and a cable release. And if you have a cable release with an interval timer, this will make the process much easier. In fact, once we started the image, we sat on the beach and were able to have a wonderful conversation. So here's what we did. Once we found the location for the shot, I took a test shot at 1600 ISO. And this was just so I could view the composition and check my focus. Even though it was a full moon, it's still dark. And then I reset my ISO to 1600 and verified that the noise reduction on the camera was not set. I do not want noise reduction. And for this image, I, I use 5.6 f-stop. On my interval timer, I set the exposure to 4 minutes and set the number of exposures to 19. I also set a 1 second delay between each exposure to just give the camera time to reset between each shot. Then once you click the shutter, the camera takes over and you just have to wait. Once you're ready to process your images, there are several methods. The one that I'm going to use today is from Russell Brown, and he's an Adobe evangelist and has a bunch of actual helpful scripts on his site. So if you just go to russellbrown.com slash tips underscore tech dot html, you'll find this, this script plus a couple others that you might want to experiment with. For Windows, Google startrails.exe, and you can download a, a separate little app that you can run on Windows, and it, it does pretty much the same thing as the Russell Brown script. And there's also a Keys Image Stacker that if you're on the Mac, you might, you might want to try. All right, so I've got my images, and I'm in Bridge. And before I start, let me just kind of scroll through the images that we're going to look at. And not only are the stars moving in each image, but you'll notice that I've got moon shadows. And each one of the, as each exposure, as you can see the moon switching over. And this could, could uh, make a little bit of a problem in the final image because not only am I going to process all these images to get the star trails, but it's going to average out those, those image, the, the shadows on the, the tufas as well. But we'll, as we say, you'll, we'll take care of that. So here's my images. And one other thing I want to point out, during one of the exposures, a plane flew through this, this and left a, a little jet trail right here. I don't want that in my final image because it's a lighter image and you'll see that if you leave that in there it will be included as as you stack the images. So what I did is just open that one image inside of Photoshop and just cloned out that start that jet trail. So the next thing I want to do is select all of these images. So I'm going to do Command A or Control A on the Windows and remember that image that I already uh, with the, the jet trail, I don't want to include the original one, so I'm going to command or control click on that image so it's not part of the group. Now go to Tools and select Dr. Brown Services. This is the script I've already installed and it's going to show up in Bridge and you'll see that it's also in Photoshop. So I'm going to pick Dr. Brown's Stackomatic, and it opens up a dialog box where you want to make sure you, you check Create Stack. And you'll notice there's an Auto Align button as well. I do not want to select that, if you, mainly because I was using a tripod and each one of these images are already aligned. But if I, had, if I do check that, it's actually going to take a little bit longer time to process. The next thing you want to do is select the Stack Mode. And in the drop-down list, you'll see there's a lot of choices, some of which I have no clue what they do. But the ones that we're going to kind of be looking at are maximum, mean, me median, and minimum. I'm going to pick median 
knowing that that's not the right answer. And I'm going to do that so you can see how you can change that later inside of Photoshop. So click OK and the script takes over and starts processing those 19 images into separate layers inside the, photo, the final Photoshop file. Note that I, on this image, I'm already, I made small uh, TIFF files just for demonstration. This script could take a long time, especially if you're using lots of images and raw images. All right, now it's done, and you can see that it created a smart object for me. And also you might notice, hey, I have no star trails. Well, that's because we picked the wrong stacking mode. So let's change that. I'm going to go to Layer, Smart Objects, Stack Mode. And now you can see in the list, these are all the options that we saw previously in that original dialog box. This time, I'm going to select Maximum. And now I have the star trails. What Maximum does is pick the lightest image on, on each pixel on each layer and displays that pixel by pixel. And because the stars in the sky are the lightest uh, pixels, that's why all of these uh, star trails now appear. But also what happened is in the tufas in the foreground, the same thing happened there. It picked the lightest pixel four down there. Remember how we saw the, the shadows passing through? So now I've kind of lost that nice little depth outside the tufas. So the next thing I'm going to do, well, first first I'm going to do is crop this image, because over here on this right-hand side, there's this extra tufa sticking out here, and I really don't like it. So I'm going to press the C key so I can get the crop tool, and I'll just crop that real quick. And actually, I like the way it moved the offset, the tufas anyway, off to the side a little bit. So now, to fix that foreground, what I'm going to do is just duplicate this stack. Just pull it down on top of the duplicate option down at the bottom, and now I have two smart objects. Well, the first, the top one, I want to leave as that maximum uh, value in the stacking. But the bottom one, what I'm going to do is change that to uh, median. Well, nothing's happened. So what I'm going to do up here at the top is add a mask. And I'm going to do this just real quick. I'm going to press the B key to br get the brush tool and verify that I have black as my uh, foreground color. And I'm just going to start painting in the top here. And I'm not, not going to spend a lot of time, just so you can get the idea of what's happening. So what's happening is I'm seeing the background image, which was set to median, which should have the, the average values of all the, the, the background for me. And that gives me a little bit more depth throughout the entire image. So that's it. I could spend a little bit more time adding some color, a little bit more saturation and levels, and maybe change the color a little bit. But hopefully you get the idea of how to use this method. Thanks for being here. And if you try this technique, please post your images on the community forum. We'd love to see them.